Okay, so on page 11, 5C, we are dividing a quantity by a given ratio today. To share an amount in a ratio, first of all, you need to know how many parts or the total number of parts in your ratio. So for example, if I have the ratio two to three, it's written up here on the top of the page, I add those two numbers together, two plus three makes five parts in that ratio. The size of each share is found by multiplying the fraction that is created, it will be the number of shares for that part divided by the total. Boy, it sounds wordy when you say it like that. It's way easier when you see it in action. Okay, so let's have a look. Question number one is just finding the number of parts. So it says write down the total number of parts for each of the following ratios. All you have to do is add the numbers together. So the ratio two to five, two plus five makes seven. So that is seven parts in that ratio. Part B, four to three, adding that together is seven parts again. Part C, 6 and 13 makes 19 parts. And even if there's three numbers in the ratio, you still add them together. 2 plus 3 plus 5 does make 10 parts. Yeah, I know. But do your best. Question 2. The ratio of white chocolate to milk chocolate on a block of top, do, top deck chocolate is in the ratio 1 to 2. What fraction of the block is white chocolate? So first of all, remember, we've just been counting parts. That ratio has got three parts, adding them together. So if I want to know what fraction of the block is white chocolate, which number is white chocolate? The one or the two? Look in here, the ratio of white chocolate to milk chocolate, the white's going to be the first one. So there is one part white chocolate out of the total of three parts. And then for part B, what fraction of the block is milk chocolate? That's the two out of the total parts, which is three. And that totally makes sense, I, I hope. One third of the block is white chocolate and two thirds of the block is milk chocolate. Right? Adds to give one, a whole block of chocolate. So we're going to use that idea to help us divide things like in question number three. These questions, I like these questions on tests, so they'll be there. Okay? If I want to divide $72 in the ratio of four to five. Okay, so maybe you're business owners and that's how you share your profits. You know, not everything is shared equally. They're often in ratios. So the first thing you want to do is add together the parts of your ratio. There is four plus five, which makes nine parts. Okay, that's very important that you do that first. Then the first person, this first part, gets a fraction of four out of the nine parts. And if we're dividing up $72, all I have to do is times that by 72. Okay, and then I get my calculator out and I go 4 over 9 times 72, that makes $32. Okay, so the first person is going to get $32 when that money is divided up. The second person now, they have the five in that ratio, they're going to get five out of the nine parts, and you times that by 72. So come back here, you can either retype the whole thing, or just change your four to a five, and that makes $40. Now you can, I'm, I'm happy with that as an answer, but sometimes you will see in books, that they rewrite that as a ratio, so $32 to $40, because then it is easy to see this four, the person who is the four, they're getting the $32, and the second person is getting the $40. You should always check that your answer is realistic by adding those two numbers together, 40 plus 32, 
Does that make 72? Yes. I hope so. Yes. Okay. So I have divided that correctly. Okay. Let's try it again. Question four. We want to now divide $400 in the ratio 3 to 2. Except we don't need to do both of them. It just says to find the smaller part. Just the smaller one, not both of them. So first of all, how many parts are in my ratio? Five. So five parts. Good. Which one's the smaller part, the three or the two? Two. Excellent. Obviously, smaller number means smaller part. So for just to work out the smaller part, I make it into a fraction, two out of the five, and you times that by the amount that you're dividing up, which is $400. If you type that in your calculator, has anyone done it? Yeah, what did you get, Reese? Perfect. Okay. So I only had to do the one of them for this one because I only asked for the smaller one. So that's it. That's all I had to do. Next page. Question five. In a class of 30 students, the ratio of right-handed students to left-handed students is five to one. How many parts are in that ratio? I'm writing it down. Six parts. Add those numbers together. Six parts. Um, find the number of right-handed students. So it was right-handed students to left-handed students. The right-handed people is the five. So let's make it into a fraction. Five students out of a total of six in the ratio, five parts out of six. If I times that by 30 students in the class, what does it equal? 25, good. So there is 25 students are right-handed. Question six. The ratio of adults to children on a train is three to two. So as soon as I look at that, I go, there's five parts. And you can even go adults to children, so you know which one is which. If the train carries 800 hundred passengers, find the number of adults and the number of children on the train. So I do want both of them this time. So let's start with the adults. Because that's the first number in my ratio. The adults in the ratio are the three out of the total of five parts. If I times that by 800 people, because there's 800 people on the train, that equals... Good job, Julia. Yes, 480 adults. Then we do the children. So in our ratio, there is two for the children. We put that over the total, which is five. And then we times that by 800. Oh, good job. Okay, so there is 480 adults, 320 children. If you're wanting to double check, you add those two numbers together and make sure that that totals 800, which it does. Okay, all right. One more question. Yes. You don't have to, no. I, I thought I said with the first question. Sometimes you will see it written that way, and I'm happy for you to write it that way if you do do it, but I'm, very, I'm also very happy to see it like that. Just adults is 480, children is 320. Okay, question seven. Concrete for a footpath is made up of one part cement, two parts sand, and four parts gravel. So I thought I'd just write that down again as the ratio with my dots and just put cement, sand, and gravel underneath each one so I know which, what each number is. First thing I'm obviously going to do is add those parts up. Seven. Seven parts in my ratio. All right, the question asks me how much sand, so I'm only really interested in this one, how much sand is used to make 12.6 cubic meters of concrete. So just using the sand, there is two parts sand out of the seven. So maybe I should put sand here, so sand is that. 
I'm going to times that by the 12.6 cubic meters of concrete that I want. Good job. 3.6 cubic meters of sand will be needed. They're good questions, hey? Sure. I sure are. Lots of fun to be had. So, 5C, starting on the next page.